Hi, this is Shreyang Siddharth and welcome to the second part of Constructor and Constructor Overloading in Java. So in this video, let us jump on to the IntelliJ IDE and let us explore the constructors in detail. Now here down the side, I have simply defined my class of rectangle. Now this is the same example that you saw in case of in the previous few videos of rectangle class. So here inside the class rectangle, I have two field variables of float length and float breadth. And down the side, I have some getters and setters, right? And as you all know, the setters are used to set the value and the getters actually return some value. And down the side, I have one method of get area. So this method simply returns the area of the rectangle as simple as that. So inside the main method, I have this object created rectangle space R1 equal to new rectangle. So this new rectangle is exactly is actually the default constructor. And now you must be thinking that inside the class rectangle, I have no default constructor defined here. So in Java, by default, when you call new rectangle, you don't have to explicitly define the constructor here. Fine. So the default constructor need not to be declared explicitly unless you are using some other parameterized constructor. And now here I'm simply using the setter function to set the length and then set the breadth. And now let us use system.out.println and simply print r1.getArea. Let us print the area of the rectangle. So here in the output, we get 200 as the result. Fine. So our code is now working perfectly fine. So now let us come to the point. So here I will simply create a new rectangle object. Let's say R2 equal to new rectangle. Now this time I am not going to call the default constructor. I am simply going to call the parameterized constructor. That is inside this constructor, I will simply pass, let's say length as 20.0 F comma and breadth as 10.0 F, right? And now here it shows some error the constructor is actually undefined. So now if you are using the parameterized constructor, then you need to define the constructor explicitly inside the class of rectangle. So here what I will do, I will simply define my constructor, let's say public. And now as per the rule, the name of the constructor should be same as the name of the class, right? So let us use public rectangle and then let's say int length and then int breadth. And now inside the constructor, let us use this dot length equal to L and now this dot breadth equal to B. Fine. And now here again, it shows some error. Oh, by mistake, this should be float. And again, this should be float. And now this rectifies our error. So when this statement will be executed, then this constructor will be called and the length and breadth will be initialized to 20 and 10.0 respectively that we are doing here, right? And now at the top here, the default constructor shows some error. So here it shows that if you are using the parameterized constructor, then you need to declare the default constructor inside this class. Fine. So here I will use public rectangle and this is the blank body of this default constructor. And now this rectifies the error at the top. Now here, let us print the area. Let's say R2 dot get area. And let's see what is the result. So here in the output, we get 200 and 200 as the result. So in both the case, we are able to get the same area. Now what is the difference and which is the better solution for writing the object oriented code in Java? Now, whenever you are creating an object and in that case, while creating an object, you don't know what should be the value of the field variables that we have defined inside the class of rectangle, then you simply use the default constructor. And later on, when you know what should be the value of length and breadth, then you can simply use the setter methods and set the values, right? But if you know what should be the initial value of the length and what should be the initial value of the breadth, then you can simply use the parameterized constructor to initialize the values that we have done here. So you need not call the setter later on. 
fine and now in case and now suppose you have initialized the value as 20 and 10.0 initially and later on while your application is running you decide to change let's say r2 dot set length let it be 30.0f so later on if you decide to change the length of the rectangle to 30 instead of 20 then this method that is set length will simply override the value of the length and now the length becomes 30 and the breadth remains 10 so here if we are going to run our code right now then let's see what's the output so here in the output we get 300 now this is simply because later on when you decided to change the value of the length then you have simply used the setter method that is change the length to 30 instead of 20 right so this is the benefit of using the constructors in java you can initialize any values while creating the object and later on using the setter methods you can simply change its values and now suppose initially while creating the object you know what should be the value of length but you are not sure what should be the value of breadth so in that case you can simply call let's say rectangle space space r3 equal to new rectangle and now if you know the value of the length then you can simply pass 20.0 f fine and now this shows some error this constructor is not defined so inside the rectangle class you can simply define some constructor let's say public rectangle and simply define float l and now within the body you can simply initialize this dot length equal to l incoming value that is l right so when this statement will be executed the compiler will simply call this constructor and now later on when you are sure that what should be the value of the breadth then you can simply call r3 dot set breadth and simply pass 10.0 f and now if you want to print the area then you can simply print s out r3 dot get area so let us now run our code so here we go 200 as the output so i hope now you know what is the benefit of using the constructor the default constructor the parameterized constructors and also what is the benefit of using the setters in java right and now the concept of using the multiple constructors is actually known as the constructor overloading in java that is these are having the same name but they are having the different parameters that you can see in front of you so the compiler will call these constructors accordingly right so this was all about the constructors and the concept of overloading in java so meanwhile if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel smarthood and please do leave a comment below this video your feedback is very valuable for me. Thank you and have a good day.